no plans, no plans at all Evil man's always transcending Fight her like sheep, swallow everything Always simple tins or pretending We got no plans This is your moment of clarity, coming to you live from the Cayman Islands where I'm investigating uh, tax havens. You can keep up with those videos at operationcaymans.org. But right now I want to bring you my conversation with a couple of amazing and respected activists. Dr. Margaret Flowers, who's a congressional fellow with Physicians for a National Health Program and has actually been called the Medic Fighting Wall Street. Also, Kevin Zeese, who directs the anti-war group Come Home America and the economic justice group It's Our Economy. He and Dr. Flowers also helped organize the October 2011 occupation of Washington, D.C. in Freedom Plaza, which is where I first met them, and they helped organize Occupy the Debates. I met up with them while I was performing at Occupy the Debates in Denver a little over a week ago. Also on the bill that night was the Raging Grannies. I'm going to play a little bit of their stuff. If you haven't seen them, you're going to love it. And uh, please make sure Moment of Clarity continues by becoming a member at LeeCamp.net. And here now is my conversation with Kevin Zeese and Margaret Flowers. Well, what we're trying to do through Occupy the Debates is show the disconnect between the corporate-controlled debates, the corporate-controlled candidates, and what they're allowed to talk about, and the issues that people actually do care about and the solutions that people actually want to see. So we're trying to uh, bring people together to talk about those issues and solutions and, and push them out there. We're trying to broaden the dialogue beyond what the corporations allow. That would right. be a quick way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things you mentioned just a second ago, which uh, I, I would, I will pay you a billion dollars if it gets mentioned in the debates, is the trans oh, It will not be mentioned in the debates. So tell, you know, I'm kind of just learning about it like that. I mean, it's incredibly secretive. Yes. Uh, and so what is the Trans-Pacific Partnership? Well, TPP stands for Toilet Paper Plus. Right. No, not really. <laughs> it stands for Trans-Pacific Partnership, and it's the largest trade agreement in history. Obama's uh, trade representative is negotiating it right now, and it's going to be a gigantic job outsourcing, hollowing out of our economy, uh, kind of a, a treaty. And it's the, it's the one that can set the terms for trade for really the whole world because it allows a docking agreement where other nations can dock it and join it. And so while it's being negotiated right now with the Pacific Rim countries, just Australia, the United States, and some small countries, and we're, we're trying to pull these small countries to accept a terrible treaty. Uh, it, uh, it, it's going to become the trade regimen for the world. And this has a huge impact on all of our lives. And why, why is it no one has a say and most people have never heard of it? Well, it's really interesting because uh, there are 600 corporate trade advisors that are working with Ron Kirk, the president's trade representative, and they have real-time access to the, trade nego the text as it's being negotiated so they can advise on it. They, they actually get it on their anybody. computer. Yeah. So they can, they can, they, on their computer they can send back to the trade group. Here's an amendment we suggest. But our, our Congress members can't see it, the, the people can can't see it, the media, the media can't see it, it, but these 600 advisors. Sounds kind of like ALEC. And it's, exactly. and it's got yeah. some yeah. about, the, uh, about legislation. The trade right. tribunals, they're creating a whole court system for corporations, uh, where a corporation can sue a country for projected lost profits because of the environmental law, labor law, consumer law, health law, whatever it is. They can say, we're going to lose $10 million because of that environmental law Vietnam you have. You have to pay us $10 million. And they create trade tribunals, three judges, and the judges come primarily from corporations who are corporate lawyers. So they take leave from the corporate job, they go become a judge, they rule over the corporation, they go back to the corporation. And as a result, you'll see no environmental laws, no labor laws, no, no consumer laws. What's always laws good is when corporations laws. are essentially monitoring themselves. Isn't that disgusting? Right. Well, it's, it's, you know, Walmart is a big part of this because Walmart doesn't think that Chinese labor is low enough. They're trying to get into Malaysia and Vietnam. I mean, they Vietnam, do. Vietnam. They have lived on their high horse for too long, <laughs> exactly. those Chinese workers. Well, I mean, they, Vietnam, they're it's fighting a, to get into the factories. Right? The per capita, you know, is that, that's what oh, Romney, that's, oh, that's Romney's what Romney says that, yeah. About how they were fighting to get in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you believe that? That's yeah, why they yeah. Romney believed that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, the, the average per capita, the per capita income in, in Vietnam is $1,000 a year. Yeah. So how can Americans compete? How can even Chinese compete? It's going to drive right. wages and it's going to drive jobs and to Vietnam and well, wages down here. Well, that's why I love that expression when people want to go against unions, they go, it makes us not competitive. Do you understand what you're asking <laughs> to compete with? Right. Like, you want us to be earning five cents a, an hour? Like You know, what's really gross about it too is Obama's at the Democratic Convention saying jobs, jobs, jobs are going to stop outsourcing. While his trade negotiator that weekend is negotiating this treaty that's going to be gigantic job outsourcing. So he just like says 
well, one thing in public perfect. under the spotlight right. and then says the opposite is just does the opposite behind the scenes right so to slightly sh shift gears uh where do you see what do you what do you see occupy as right now you've been very active in it and uh you know and, and freedom plaza down in dc was where i first met you guys and like where do you see it headed now where what do you what do you feel it is and, and where should it go i think um occupy is it's a very young movement. I think most people understand that this is a long-term struggle to reduce the wealth and inequality in this country, yeah. start building systems that actually meet yeah. our human needs and, and undermine corporate power. Um, I think right now we're really in the phase of education and movement building, and that's what a lot of occupiers are doing. They have working groups that are, some are doing action, but a lot are focusing on educating about the issues. We brought the occupiers with us tonight. Those are an excellent resource for people to learn about the specific issues of why we occupy, but um, I think this is hopefully going to be the a cohesive movement of, you know, a, ver a varied and creative and diverse movement that is focusing to end corporate rule and shift power. If you remember, Occupy was a tactic. Right. Yeah. The bigger issue is how do we shift power from money to people, uh, from corporations, profits to meeting human necessities. Uh, and, and so, just like the Freedom Ride was a tactic in the civil rights struggle, Occupy is a tactic in this. And you may even want to go back and say the WTO protests in Seattle. Maybe that's the seeds of this. I mean, this right. is this is a bigger thing than just Occupy. That's what I try, and, and I often put it in my sets, I'll say. You know, you can call it Occupy, call it the Indignados, call it what's going on in, in Quebec. It's These things are all linked. It's right. Exactly. All very similar. Even the Chicago features. And so the yeah. best thing yeah. to say about the Occupy would be we can't predict what's going to happen next. But we can tell you something's going to happen next. There's a gigantic battle about to happen in the United States after the election. It'll be Obama, but no matter who's elected, it's going to be an attack on our social safety net, what's left of it. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, food stamps, all these social safety net uh, protections are going to be attacked in an austerity budget. And that's going to really, I think, energize people again to take actions that we can't predict. And the, when you know you have a movement, it's when you can't predict what's going to happen, but something does happen. Right. And that's where we are. We're in a movement that is, people are... What happened with Occupy, the first phase, was people got a sense that they have power, that if they act, they can make a difference. Right. You know, we had... And we they got two, a sense of how much people wanted to stop it. Yes, like, we were not alone. Not yeah, alone. That shows their fear. You weren't that alone. That's right. Powerful we are. And you yeah. can see the government's reaction. They, they were right. afraid. We have about 250,000, 300,000 people involved in Occupy. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine we have 1% of the population involved? Yeah. That's 3 million. Yeah. Uh, if we get to 3 million or 10%, 30 million, those are not unreachable goals. And, and that's where we're heading. And so I think Occupy's future is that direction and what the specific tactics are within the framework of an independent, non-violent movement are hard to predict, but they will be reactions to continued corporate abuse of their power. Okay, so all these things you've brought up that people have gone, what, I didn't know about that. Uh, where can they find out more about it? Well, TPP, we have a great little uh, page called Flush the TPP. Mm -hmm. Flush the Toilet Paper Plus. <laughs> Flush the TPP.org. And you can see Margaret there on a gigantic tripod uh, 20 feet up in the air, blocking the negotiators from getting to their Leesburg retreat. Uh, and so you can see the video about that. We also see a lot of articles about that. Right, our, real our, information about what's in it that our, we know of. Our, big, our two big websites would be uh, OccupyWashingDC.org, which is about the Occupy movement. It's not just about what's happening in D.C., but it's happening all over the country. And the other big uh, website for us is It's Our Economy. That's our economic project. It's Our Economy.us, and that's to try to democratize the economy to give people more power in their economic lives. Excellent. Thank cool. you guys so much. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Legitimate rape is great birth control. So says Todd Aiken, and he ought to know. If we are raped, we can rest unafraid. Cause we can't get pregnant if forcibly laid. Our female bodies are clever that way. We only get pregnant if we say okay. Doctors have told him, so it must be so. The stork only comes if we don't say no. Rape won't make babies, and that is a fact. There's no global warming, the Earth's really flat. We heard it on Fox Noise, so it must be true. Well, Mr. Aiken, we say, Fox you.